Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a deep house track like Joel Corey and get on the radio with a song that sounds like this. <laughs> What's up you guys? My name is Jacoby Jones. I'm a DJ producer hoping to spread some good vibes with my music and my content. If you like what I happen to give out today, make sure to hit the subscribe button so I can continue to deliver for you. If not, let me know in the comments what you didn't like about it so I can try to improve for you soon. So, without further ado, I don't want to waste any more time. Let's hop into the DAW and see how we make this track. Alright, so we are here in the project file. So, as you can see, it is pretty simple. Not a lot going on here. Um, I've made Deep House projects for Ultrasonic Sounds, Music Core, and a few other companies. So I have a pretty good idea of how this project file works. We're going to be going over Head and Heart by Joel Corey. And um, additionally, I made some of my own custom changes to the project files to make them more my own and not the ones I made for the companies. So, essentially, when it comes to Deep House like Joel Corey and David Guetta and Tiesto and all these artists, it's really important to recognize that while the production can be great, all that really matters is the vocal. The reason these songs get so popular is because they have a very catchy vocal that is danceable too as well, but they can be sung along too. So if you don't have a great vocal, this kind of track is not gonna work. Because if you look, all I've got here is a bass and some piano chords and drums. Everything else is the vocal. The song is driven by the vocal, so it's really important that you have one. So I recommend investing in a vocalist somehow or doing a royalty split with one more on your level that way, in case you don't have a lot of money. If you guys want, let me know in the comments and I will do a video on how to get a vocalist on your track. So either way, let's get into the track. We're just gonna break this down section by section. As you can see in the intro, we just have the acapella, which sounds like this. Pretty simple, you guys have heard the track and then you have a clap. That's literally it. That's all there is. And this is what I mean when I say that the vocal is what drives the track. As you can see, this is sounding pretty full. Um, then we get into this part, which is where stuff starts to get interesting. So in this section, we have a, in addition to the clap, we have a drum loop, just a shaker, and a crash cymbal to help introduce the next section. And then we get into the bass, which sounds like this when combined everything. So let's take a look at the bass. First off, here's the MIDI in case you want to look at it. Um, I'll make it a little bigger. Um, so that's the bass line. And essentially, I've got a few different layers here doing various things. So first one is a click. This is from Music Core. Uh, it's Serum, and it's basically just to add transient just helps give it that click. This is Frozen by Ultrasonic. This is very deep, um, helps bring out that 100 to 300 frequencies. This is uh, a bass, this is more of an FM style bass from Julian Jordan's pack called uh, Deeper. This is Serum as well. I also have this bass from Musicore. I think it's from their Euphoria pack. This helps add a little tone, but also making sure that the transient hits hard. This one is very tone heavy bass and it's supposed to bring out the higher levels of the bass frequencies. That way, when listening to the bass, it's not just all low end, it actually has some melody to it as well. Because as you can see, there's no other melodics going on right now, so that's really important. This bass also follows that melody, but gives it much more grittiness and kind of helps dirty it up a little bit and this is a uh, heart from ultrasonics regardless pack <clears throat> uh, additionally i have a sub going on here and uh that's just a sub it's julian jordan best sub ever that's the one i usually use All of these are following the same bass line and for processing i really don't have a lot for the mid bass i'm just cutting out the sub and for the sub bass, I am cutting out the mid bass, everything else that isn't sub. I got some kickstart on there to have a little subside chain. And then just a little saturation. That's really it. You know, it's common that someone could put OTT to help bring all the layers together or potentially 
go into some more deep processing, but I just really didn't find it necessary because I felt that all the presets sounded pretty good on their own. So just to recap, this is what the bass sounds like altogether. So when combined with everything else we just went over in this part of the track, it sounds like this. So let's move on to the second part of the track. We have a little reverse crash going into the next part just to help transition. Now we add something, some new stuff here. This is um, a big crash impact kind of sound. Um, right. There we go. So we have two cashmere crashes, um, ultrasonic impact and downlifter, and uh, just two crashes. And everything else is the same except we add some new instruments. And this is a sample bass shot. Uh, sounds like this. The reason I did this is because I wanted the next part of the song to have a more tonal bass sound. That way it is much more, um, you know, melodic and it can sound fuller. And also we add a piano. So as you can see, this is um, automating up the frequencies, like the low cut and the filter. I have a filter on there. And um, that's just automating up. I'll show you the layers and then we'll go over the processing. So for the piano, I have this by Nexus. It's called um, Piano Dance Piano 2K17. Then I have a Digi Piano, which sounds like this. And then I have this piano, which is um, much more realistic than the other two. The other two are Nexus pianos, and this one is by Addictive Keys. It's called Studio Grand. Uh, Addictive Keys is usually my go-to when I'm going for a really realistic piano. I don't have a contact pianos or anything like that. Keyscape's a great one if you're looking for one as well. Sounds like this. So those are the pianos. Uh, for the processing, I have uh, Reverb, uh, Valhalla Room. It's at about 20% with a two second decay. Uh, I have OTT, 32% uh, with a little downward compression. That way uh, we can bring out some frequencies that we didn't have before. I'm lowering the highs here because um, once I added the OTTs, the piano had a lot of brightness that wasn't really necessary. Um, I have an EQ cutting out all this because this is all bass frequency. We don't want any of that up to 300 because the mid is also filled by the bass. We had those melodic top line bass levels, that way we could actually have better bass lines. So then on top of that we have the filter, which you saw we are automating, this is just a logic stock filter. And then kickstart. So the kickstart is for when we use it later in the drop, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Additionally in this part it also turns into a build up, and the only build up elements are just these two right here. We have build up drums and a noise riser, which sound like this together. And those crashes just help transition into the drop a little bit better. Um, so that's really it. After that, we go into the drop, which is very simple. All that it is, is the same as the verse, the bass line and the vocal, but with a kick this time. That's really the only difference and everything is now sidechained. Let's take a look at the kick. It's a very simple kick. Deep and punchy. And when combined with the bass, um, sounds pretty good. I also have a crash. But that's really all there is. I have to really reinforce the fact that the vocal is everything here. So without the vocal, it's just a kick and a bass. But with the vocal, it's a track that people love and can sing to. And then on the second part of the drop, I have another crash, and then I have this little drum loop that I made with a shaker and offbeat ride, which sounds like this. When combined with the other drums, I also bring the claps back in, by the way, and they sound like this. So 
So that's a fill from the ultrasonic pack, this one. And then this crash is um, cashmere. This helps transition. And then once we get into the second part of the drop, this is something that Joel Corey does a lot, is that he has one part of the drop being very bass heavy and one part of the the second part of the drop bringing back the piano that he has in the verse he does that in head and heart he does that in bed he does that in i wish with uh, mabel uh and if you listen to the piano now it's a lot brighter i don't have a filter on there as much anymore and it's kickstart as well there's side chain and then when layering that you know with the kick and bass it sounds a lot more full <laughs> I also have that drum loop going and I have ambiance now and also another clap just to help fill it up. And so all together, I'll take away the vocal so you can hear what it sounds like without the vocal, but this is what we're dealing with right now. It's very simple, not very much going on, but then when you add the vocal, it sounds a lot more groovy. So one thing I should mention is that the reason everything is so simple is not just because um, it's not a complex genre or anything like that, but like I said, the vocal drives the track, so the reason we don't have much going on here is because we want to make room for that vocal. We want to prioritize that vocal as the center point of the track, so we want to make sure everything else is just supporting that. So we don't really need a whole lot to do that. But in essence, it's a pretty easy track to make. Joel Corey's music is not very complex, it's just very catchy. So I really recommend getting a good vocal, and that's what's going to really sell the track. So that's basically how you make Deep House like Joel Corey, and that's... Pretty much everything, I think I covered it all. And that's basically it for this week's video, guys. We just went over how to make Deep House like Joel Corey. If you enjoyed this video, maybe consider subscribing. That way I can keep delivering great videos to you and hopefully help you out. Also, be sure to follow my Instagram, at Jacoby Jones Music, to get a more personal look into my life as a producer. And also join a family of people who are just looking to experience some good vibes and feel free with some great music. My name is Jacoby Jones. I'll see you next time.